about nothing. It's me, your boy, the hottest dude in the podcast game, Sebastian Canelli. And as always, per usual, we got the cute boy snug in a rug like a little, little bug over here. Robbie boy, Robbie, if your hands could come out, say hello to people. What's up, people? How are we doing? <laughs> One hand didn't make it out when he tried to What's going to do on? It. My hands are out. So Robbie's, No funny business. Robbie's a little cold. Yeah, I'm cold. He's cold. A little more than a little cold. He's cold. He's at my house <laughs> saying he's cold. Solidly cold. Um, and famously, my apartment's always very warm. Very warm. So it's always extremely warm. Um, so I'm very cautious to turn on the heat right now. We don't need to turn the heat on. That's what I think, too. Because I agree. Because it's going to get hot. Yes. But. I feel good. I can tell you this. What? The kid can, the kid, the kid, kid should audition for Juilliard with how he's acting while he's cold. He's going. That's what it is. It's an act. He's going. He's going <laughs> like this. He's going. It's all an act. I know it is. He's going. I go. <laughs> you all got to play me like a fool. I know it's an act. Yeah. Cold doesn't exist. Classically trained. Um. He goes like this. We're sitting inside in the kitchen, and he's and he goes, "I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go sit on the couch for a little bit. So let me know, let me know when um when the computer makes a beep." <laughs> like literally, he has COVID or something. <laughs> no, I <laughs> had the shakes. I get the shakes. People get cold. How do you how do you do operating? So here's a nice question. How do you do operating from the shower to the bedroom, uh, like when, after a shower? Are you shivering, trying to get your clothes on ASAP? Fast. I, I move fast. You move fast. Yes. I stay. I take long showers. I know. I have insider information from your roommates. What? I don't know. We don't need to. What's the insider information? That you, um, you pretty regularly leave a trail of footprints from the shower to your bedroom. I must go fast. As soon as I'm out, I'm in my. Uh, I go to my room. Of the insides, I, I, I. But you, there's not a lot. Yeah, of I just dry got my off. house bugged. What is this? You, 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 there's not a lot of dry off. I guess I, I move. Uh, yeah, I, I'm cold. Here he is, snug as a bug in a rug. Um, but I'm happy. I told you, Robbie. What do I care about? That I'm comfortable. That's all I care about. Will I make That's fun of you? For sure. For sure. For sure. You can make fun of me. I'm not going to make fun of you. Have you been looking at any Black Friday deals? No. You're not going to do any single Black Friday deal? No. Really? Probably not. Not even for gifts you have to buy for your family or something? I don't really have to buy any gifts. Not for your mother? I, I should buy something for my mom. I feel bad for you. Why? I was feeling bad for me, too, about the same reason. Uh, part of like the amazing parts of the holidays is being able to give a gift. I agree. And I think that, like, last year when we went to the mall, I remember feeling a little blue that I had no one to buy a gift for. Yeah. I guess I got I, I could buy a few gifts. I mean, but what are we going to do? Really indulge in our mother's gifts? <laughs> like, really? Like, like that's kind of... I got to be so thoughtful for my mommy. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, like, get her the most perfect <laughs> thing, mommy. That's good. But anytime I'm, like, sitting here reflecting on what I should buy my mom, I'm like... Stop! What are you doing? Like, yeah, yeah. Like she doesn't one want me to spend that much mental energy. No, or money. Or money. It's not gonna hit. No. The way that it would with a romantic partner. It's nice. It's nice to buy. I think me and you like to buy things for romantic interests, and we don't do that. And yeah, I think that that's because that's a lot. Even more than giving. I want to like somebody enough that I I want to be excited to give them a really thoughtful gift. Yeah, with the partner, I've never been excited to receive a gift from them. I've no. always been excited just to give a gift to them. It's fun. Yeah, and I we think don't we have are that. people that like to walk around the mall and pop into a different bunch of different places, gauge what's going on in the mall, get a big idea. All right, you go you know, one one trip just to see what is out there, and then you could even form a picture. You know what was yeah. You know what's amazing about buying so, uh, someone a gift? You would go into stores you never would venture in. No, unless you're buying. And them you have a, a gift. reason. And you have a reason. Yeah. Remember how fun it would be when, because for my family, we would go to the mall before it was time to like f pick out some Christmas gifts, right? I, I'm I'm older, um, and so we would either like look through a catalog. Yeah, catalogs were big. Catalogs were huge. Yeah, and exciting. You don't got to tell me multiple times. I had moments with that JCPenney catalog. Oh, we've heard. 
I know. That's a that's how you know I grew up real middle class. I couldn't even jerk off to the Macy's cattle. <laughs> JC Penny was the the rage. JC Penny was the rage. Um I didn't know that there was a different like like a class difference. Definitely. Nordstrom's was a I didn't realize all Lord that. Lord and Taylor's. Yeah, right? Lord and Taylor was. Lord and Taylor's? Yeah. That was the crap. I wasn't even allowed in a Lord and Taylor's. I I didn't really go in them either. That was Bloomingdale's, f- I didn't realize, was also kind of high end. One of the first places I felt cashmere was in Bloomingdale's. Bloomingdale's. I, or- remember, I remember vividly being in Bloomingdale's, and my father goes, oh, over there, that's cashmere. And I go, oh. And I just stood there and I touched it like I was on ecstasy or something. But I was just an eight-year-old child that just felt fabric for the elites for the first time. <laughs> on your, it was on your hand, or you hit a little, little cheek action. You know, I hit the cheek. You hit the cheek. You know, my eight-year-old. It would be wasted, especially you with your your cheeks. <laughs> you got Ooh, cheeks. I got cheeks. <laughs> you gotta go with the little cashmere. You know, and an eight-year-old boy gets away with rubbing his cheeks on a cashmere. Absolutely. Right. As me as an adult now, I can't walk into a store rubbing a cashmere. No. I miss that. No. Yeah, that's that's was... something from the childhood I miss. There's a lot of long mall days. And so we would go to the mall, and I don't know if you had this experience with your family, but we would pick out stuff we want in a store, and then my parents would say, okay, go sit outside. And we'd have to sit on a bench with my dad, like the the three kids and my dad, as my mom jumped from one store to another, running around the mall, picking out all the things that we picked out. Oh, no. We weren't, like, allowed to be in the store uh, as she bought it. No. My mom didn't work growing up. Oh, so, So yeah. she could go back to the mall oh, while yeah. we were at school. We didn't get the go back. We would be, yeah, she was doing both trips in one. Nah. Your mom's a queen. My mom, she was getting That's a long day. Oh, and she, my mom exhausted. would be screaming at us, like, not even having to do the separate thing. I can only imagine that the stress your mom was feeling. I can't even imagine either. And on top of that, then we have to eat at the mall. She's pulling out her Weight Watchers sliding scale thing. Oh, wow. She's doing a lot of stuff. <laughs> she couldn't even. She's pulling out her Weight she's Watchers. She's doing a lot of stuff. And Weight Watchers back in the day used to have this thing that you like had to slide how many calories, how many f- fat, and how much fiber. And it would tell you the points along the line. Uh, it was like this little like booklet thing that you slid. And my mom would be pulling that out and standing in front of the Chinese place at the, at the food court, standing in front of the taco place. And this was before they had calories on stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah, I forgot about that. So my mom's eyeballing. Oh, God, what a hard day for her. It is interesting to look back because she's just a woman in her late 30s, early 40s with three kids at a mall. Hustle. The kids start fu- like she's doing it for the kids, so they have a nice Christmas. Screaming because we can't go to friendlies to get uh, Reese's Pieces. You're screaming, yeah, yeah, screaming because you see something you want it. But yeah, there's there's a, those mall days were roller coasters. I, I it's truly mothers of the '90s and the 2000s putting God's work for us to have presents under the tree. Yes, those long days at the mall distracting kids so they could sneak the gifts in a bag that they already had. Yeah, yeah. My mom sometimes would bring other bags and put big bags in little bags so I didn't know she bought something at Foot Locker. Oh, wow. I mean, the, she was really doing magic. The work she was doing, and then still on top of that, convincing me that Santa Claus was real. Yes. Through storytelling. At the mall. At the mall. Just giving you lore. It was like my mom would go, (laughs) okay, I'm going to run to these three stores. You, go remind them about Santa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) It was like they split up in order to, like, keep that magic alive. That's beautiful. That's hard. I mean, that's a lot. They were doing a lot. We would buy – I have ten first cousins and then probably, like, another – 10 first cousins that were in the heavy rotate like that we would see for the holiday or t- 10 second cousins that we would see for the holidays and growing up everyone would buy for everyone which was like insane at a certain point they were like we can't afford this anymore yeah but when we were young so we would go to the mall and my mom then all the aunts and uncles so we we're having to buy like 50 gifts wow. for people so that's why it was like she- we would have to do like eight people that we were buying for that day at the mall and I wasn't getting these presents. My mom would ha- also have a piece of paper in her pocketbook. Yeah. That had everyone's name and what she bought for them. Yes, of course. Yeah. 
a and long it really felt that's why i think i really love the holidays because it didn't feel like we were almost at santa's factory too because we had to buy for so many people sure, yeah. we had such a big family and she would have the list and so there was a year i didn't even peek at my gifts i peeked at a list you saw the list to ruin christmas over peeking at a list is really the yeah. worst it's like i saw the cliff notes of my of my joy i think the first time you ruin christmas for yourself you don't do it again it doesn't feel as good as you think. But it would be nice. It would be nice to buy. It's nice, I think, to pay attention to someone all year and get them something thoughtful. And it's like, oh, you do listen to me. Like, I think that's part of Yeah. What gifts. you want is to create an illusion that you never no, listen. No, I don't want no, that let's illusion. let's get this clear. No, Robbie, I think this is a great point you're making. Yeah. What you want is the illusion that you don't care all year long. And then Christmas comes and you go, bam, I do care. And they go, oh. No. <laughs> You're right. Oh my God, he does listen. Ah! <laughs> it just starts crying yes. because the, the months of torture and abuse they put you put them through. You're right. That's not what it should be. No, that's what it should be. This is what you do. I say be. You're right, Robbie. Be mean to your partner no, for months, not, so Christmas feels better. We don't need to go. You're right, Robbie. Be mean to your partner. That's not a sentence. Robbie said that it we best. Need. Torture your loved ones <laughs> so the gifts are better. Ro to quote Robbie. To quote Ro the cute boy himself. Be so not thoughtful that the littlest, most tiny bit of thoughtfulness <laughs> seems like a fucking miracle. Goes miles. No, I want it this to be. This is nice, Robbie. <laughs> this is nice. I want it to be so thoughtful that you're like, I didn't even realize you paid attention to me on such a on such a minute level. <laughs> but I guess the way that I came out wasn't great. Um, so you think they shouldn't be surprised? No, because there's two ways to be there: surprised that you spent so much money, or surprised at how thoughtful you are. I think that you should be surprised how thoughtful you are. Right? Yeah. Which you're right, though, does take a, a lesser. You have to be less thoughtful throughout the year I will, to heighten the thought, the big thoughtfulness. I am joking, but people do do this. Someone goes. Some people do do that. So 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 someone will go be like, I know it, babe. I was pretending. My mom would do that. I, my mom will. Do, my mom will do the same thing. So yes. I'll be like, Oh yeah, those are. Those are awesome Nikes. You go, oh, I didn't even know you like that. You know? Oh, yeah. sure. Or like brush something off. Yes. I'd be like, and you got me the Nikes I yes. wanted. She goes, I knew. And in the store, <laughs> yeah. I had to pretend. Yeah. In the store, I had to. I put, <laughs> I Meryl Streep that shit. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> you, yeah. Yeah. You got to do it. The illusion is real. Yes. Um, it is also, uh, I think we've talked about this. Like you check it and it's a, it's a define the relationship moment. Yeah. Gifts. In yeah, a way. We have. Yeah. Um, you figure out where you are. Where you are figure with it the out person. Now. Try to figure it have out. Have a conversation. Yes. Have the combo. It's a tough combo. People don't want to have the combo ahead of time because it's a tough combo. It's even tougher once the gifts. Once it's too late, it's a tougher combo. And, and if one person goes, I don't want to do the, the, Please don't get me gifts. Don't. Don't. Don't make it like I. Uh, or you can get something very small. I want to give you gifts. You can get something very small, but I don't want to do gifts. We have to take people at face value. We always need to be taking people. I'm of the belief we're always taking people at face value. I can't play these games. I know. You just look absurd making points with, with your little- With my thing? With your blanket on. Well, the people that listen don't strike can't a pose tell. Like you're, like you're in a dance hip-hop movie, okay? Don't you dare. I was striking poses if you're uh, uh, yeah. listening. Back to the streets, heating up. <laughs> I am heating up. I'm just getting started. Um, but no, it would be nice to have things to shop for, but I don't. Yeah, yeah. I've just been looking. I mean, I still use Amazon, unfortunately. Um, and if the country's going to – if we're all going to burn – at least I could get my face cream a day sooner. Well, <laughs> you can get your face cream a day sooner from Amazon. I'm Greta Thunberg's worst nightmare. Ordering hairspray on Amazon. Who am I? I'm the villain of the earth. No, you're not. I'm the villain of the earth. What's more time? As in the 2000s, we didn't even deal with global warming except for one thing. Hairspray. Hairspray. Yeah, and everyone kind of knew it wasn't great. We were more in agreement on a, to some level. Aerosol cans are bad. Hairspray We even got Amazon. taught that in class. Like in science class, third grade, it would be like, O3 is bad for the, or whatever, bad for the ozone layer. Don't use aerosol I'm a monster, cans. monster, Robbie. What do I do? At night, I go on Amazon, and I look for the biggest can of hairspray. 
I buy two of them. I say, separate boxes, please. <laughs> and I click, <laughs> next day delivery, drones only. Yeah, next day delivery. <laughs> and I have someone deliver me an Amazon package that has to pee in a bottle. <laughs> and I don't spray my hair indoors. I go to a sunny park. <laughs> And I stand next to the old sycamore tree. <laughs> and you unleash the whole bottle <laughs> until your hair is And I walk solid. through. It's more solid than this. <laughs> and I walk through. I'm looking for the glory days of my Depp or L.A. looks so, so I can go <laughs> ding, 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 ding. All I want is a girl to take her nails and go on my head. Clink, clink, bloop, bloop, bloop. <laughs> <laughs> I am the monster of today's society. Yeah, that's it. You're it. Um, yeah, so Amazon a little more than single you. Single-handedly destroying the world. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't. I don't. Oh, here we go. In my home, plastic cup, plastic straw. But you'll use the same one. Yeah, I'm using it all day. Really trying to reduce my testosterone. <laughs> Hairspray and plastic straws. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, we are very excited to have our sponsors back with us. Sunset Lake CBD. Uh, you know them, you love them. They have so many great products over there. Uh, we are excited to be working with them again. Sunset Lake is a great brand. If you want to check out some CBD, they have so many great products from. Uh, I just used some of the body lotion right before the, right before the episode, and the whole room instantly smells like uh, mentholy, right? Yeah, it smells good. The lotion's nice. It's I, I literally as sometimes it, it's so powerful that beautiful smell. You gonna use some now? Yeah, nice. <laughs> I'm Such smelling it. I almost thought you were going to put it in your nose. No. Uh, <laughs> it, it's no, like, it's yeah, uh, it's like that thing. Of, oh, if you smell your hand and you're a loser, you have some <laughs> on your nose, bro. Wipe your face. Um, um, Sunset Lake uh, has so many great products. Check out. Uh, they have oils. They got lotions. They got uh, those good vibe gummies. If you're really looking to uh, chill, uh, they're um, – Really good, very very mild uh, for people that aren't experienced in um, partaking in extracurricular activities, uh, which I really enjoy. Also, if you use the promo code LOUD, L-O-U-D, LOUD, you get 20% off your entire purchase. Uh, so if you're looking for some sleep gummies, if you're looking for some lotion, some uh, some rub for some sore muscles or just getting a little funky with those good vibes, uh, use the promo code LOUD at Sunset Lake CBD to get 20% off your entire purchase. Beautiful. All right, back to the show. Rob? What? I don't know if you could tell that I've been using some bigger words. I'm a little more thoughtful. I couldn't tell. I've been reading. You've been reading? No, I actually listened to a book on tape. Book on tape. This is how you're a 90s kid because you didn't say audiobook. <laughs> you said book on tape. As I fell asleep. That's nice. I fell asleep to a book. And you're telling people you're reading? I've told multiple people that I'm out here reading books. I'm back reading. I say I'm back on books. I'm figuring out. I literally walked in and I, I made small talk with people the other day saying I'm reading books again. And I literally fell asleep to an audio book the other night. <laughs> I don't think I started a book and I wanted to finish it. And you're like, I don't think you're going to be able to finish this book. Mm -hmm. And it got to a middle point where I'm like, this is it's an uphill battle to get through a full book. And I really wanted to switch to audio books, but I didn't think you would approve it. I think if I came back to you in my head, I was like, if I started reading a book halfway through and then I switched to the audiobook version to finish it, I'm like, Sebastian would give me shit and be like, you didn't finish a book. You didn't read a book. Meanwhile, you're out here on the streets telling people you're reading, not even opening a flipping one page. Don't even own the book. Have no idea how many pages it is. But it was read by a British person. Was it? So it's practically reading. I would say this, an audio book read by someone from England is practically reading a freaking book. That's as smart as reading a book. I don't know if, if I can it, agree. I don't love the English accent. If it's, it's not one of my favorites. But it's more intelligent. You feel intelligent. You feel like you're getting, you're, you feel like you're reading? I feel like I'm, I've, I would say this, <laughs> that either you, there's reading and there's audio books and then there's audio books read by people from England and that's reading. Well, to me. Audio books by people read from someone from America, that's still, that's an audio book. If they have a British accent, that's reading to me. That counts as – because I'm digesting words. I don't digest a word if someone has a southern accent. 
Okay. If someone has a British accent, I digest. That's a digestive okay. of words. To me, I'm almost thinking when you read, do you read books in a British accent in your head? I do a smart voice. You do a smart voice. You change the voice. I don't read. This is, It doesn't sound like this. It doesn't read in that voice. No. <laughs> when you read a book, another voice goes in your head, and that's a smart voice. Yes. A smarter person reads. Reads to me. Reads to you in your head. All audio. <laughs> I'm just cutting out the middle. Okay. I mean, like, I'm just. Audio books are great. Because the middleman is me looking at the words. Yes. So I'm just cutting that out and having the British person read to me automatically. So ideally it would be the British a British man in your head would be reading as you saw words. Mm-hmm. Usually it's a smart person. I'm thinking of like one of my uh, elementary school teachers that would read to the okay. class. And she had very great diction, almost like my sister has. Your sister does have good diction. Yeah. Your whole family. Amazing diction. Yes. Including me. When you want to. I would say this. I really pop my T's. Permanent. You do. I do pop my T's, which throws people for my accent because then they have no idea what's happening. All of you, your whole family does. Because we're theater. Yes. I want to get media trained so bad. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> That means, I don't know. I just want to get media trained. I want to know what that means. I, want to I don't know, know what, what it means either. I was telling Smash about an interview I saw last night, and he just goes, well, you know everybody's media trained, right? <laughs> I'm obsessed yeah, it's with a media LeBron trade. James. Of course, he's media trained. Robbie, we need to look up how to media trade. You want to get media trained? I'm obsessed. I, I, I'm too, I'm too willy nilly sloppy boy. I'm too willy nilly sloppy boy. I think it just means you don't say anything that would piss anybody off. I need to learn. You want to? No, you, you want to do comedy? I, no. Good comedy. I think good comedy and good media training are. Comedy comes where bad media training happens, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna I, I, an online course. I'm looking for a media training, um, a master class in media training. I'm okay. looking for or something like that. Um, so I do think that reading, uh, listening to an audio book, we might as well just say is reading. Uh, can I do that? Yeah. Can I say I was thinking about this because I don't think I didn't think you would accept it because I'm starting another book and I'm on like it. three pages in. Just get the audio, and it's on. You can now on Spotify get 15 hours of audiobooks a month. That's it? And these are like three... Yeah, I mean, one book is like three, four hours. Oh, damn. I'm close to my 15. Already? Wow, flex. I mean, I'm reading a lot. You are? <laughs> I don't know if you can say it. I'm, Robbie, on if this If you go podcast, on a date... On, you, yes, you can say it. Every, and you can go, I've read four books. Because my old roommate got into me uh, audiobooks like towards the end of us living together, and he's been super on audiobooks. Yep. And he's always like, I just listened to... And he'll say, I listened to the book. Nah. Screw that. You say red. I'm going to start to go, have you read anything great lately? I have. You're going to ask the question you want to be asked. Yeah. I, 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 the oh, typical move. Of course. <laughs> ask we, the question you want to be asked. What are we doing? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I only ask questions when I have a great story in that, my time. <laughs> they were to go, what about you? Oh, God. I'm setting, <laughs> them, I'm setting them up for success. You do do that? These are things that I feel like if I did, Sebastian would be like, he would sniff it out and call me out. Well, here's the thing. I've actually, just like the blanket, do I want you wearing a blanket? No, but I want you to be comfortable. Okay. And I want you to be proud of yourself. And saying that you listen to a book doesn't really give you that oomph. That doesn't give you that sense of accomplishment. Okay. But I want you, I mean, we're, we live in a world of lies. Yes. All we are, is, everything is smoke and mirrors, and I need to support you to be a part of the lies. Okay. So we might as well just say we read books. All right. I'm down. I'll say I read books. Because sometimes I'm in, the, I'm in the car and I read a book. That's good. I'm reading while driving, babe. You're reading all the time. I'm reading all the time. I I think it's good then. Tell people you're reading. I, I'm, I have no issues. You're no, consuming the book. I have no issues with you. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, you wearing a blanket is more of a struggle for me than you re- lying about reading books. What is so bad with the blanket? The blanket's cute. <laughs> and I'm cold. Cause <laughs> you're the one who got fucking a million views. Men need to get cozy. All these people loving it. This other podcast of these women with millions of followers I, going. Men need to get cozy. I agree. I agree. Robbie comes in the fucking studio, wants to get cozy. Sebastian's got a big issue with it. We're what working. are you doing? We're working. Pra- oh, we got to work. Men got to work. They can't got- be cozy. We have a fucking podcast. We talk. 
<laughs> I can't be cozy. All right. Mr. Cozy. All right, fine. Look at the world of lies. <laughs> this is the world it's of lies. I'm taking my slides off. All right, take I'm them off. cozy. <laughs> Shoes are off. You didn't... <laughs> Why I even have the slides on? Because I was being professional at work. I was I was at work. Was, you need shoes at work. I figured I was at work. Okay. Let me wear my shoes. All right. They're off. There we go. Out the window. All right. I'm getting cozy. <laughs> uh, thank nice. God. Sweatpants are. Can men get up. freaking cozy? You're right, <laughs> Robbie. Sometimes people need to. You need to check me on my shit. All right. Well, I checked you. You know what? Oof! Against the boards. Yes. Lesson learned. Don't mess with Robbie again. No, no, you can mess time. with me. Oh, with my cozy. No, you're right. I want you to get cozy. It's I me. I originally met, met more um, in like relaxing situations. But you're right. We are relaxed here. But you know the, the idea of of men is changing and evolving. How the do idea I know of that? men. Yeah, I agree. How do I know the idea of is changing? The idea of man is changing. GQ's man of the year. Kim Kardashian. Kim K, man of the year. And you know what? I have no problems with that. I have zero issues with that. You tell me. What woman? What? Excuse me. You tell me what man has had a more productive year than women this year? Beyonce, Taylor Swift, Kim Kardashian. These people are running. They're the most influential people. Women are the most influential people in our society today. For sure. Probably for a long time. And finally, they're getting their credit, a.k.a. man of the year. You tell me what man, what sounds more man of the year than this quote. Get your fucking ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. You have to surround yourself with people that want to work. Now, that's a quote from Man of the Fucking Year. You tell me who deserves to win Man of the Year than someone that's hustle and grind. Well, as I was going to say, I don't think the idea of man are, is changing. I just think women are getting better at being toxic men. Or Kim Kardashian is better at being a toxic man than most men on this planet. She is just let's it. Let's take the... Tradition, traditionally toxic traits of men and when women do them then we'll reward them she's killing it i would almost rather a soft man win man of the year never that would be a shot sign that man is changing but instead she's just getting better at being a man she's destroying she's kim kardashian is ruthless yeah i think Everyone. I think she's ruthless. I think Chris, uh, Chris Jenner is ruthless. Everyone that's in their circle has a horrible story about them. Yes. Every and, and everyone starts paperwork, but they still have horrible stories about. Yes. Them. And they keep they brush them under the rug. I Why? think they're ruthless. Media trains. Yes. I mean they're media trains. <laughs> I do think she's a she behaves like a powerful toxic man, and that's why she deserves to win Man of the Year. You tell me. The most toxic a man could ever be is like. Fuck it. They got to wear bras, put fucking nipples on them. Okay. That's what she did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tell me what's more toxic than a dude being like, Jesus Christ, these women got to wear bras. I don't know. I don't throw nipples on the outside of those things. <laughs> That's a toxic man. She deserves man of the year. Yeah. No, she does. She is absolutely, she doesn't care. Shits on her ex publicly. Shits on everyone publicly. Shits on it's everyone. horrible for body image movement, but then it somehow tries to be on the the forefront of it. It's uh, incredible. She just gaslights. She gas girl boss gaslights. Yeah. I mean, yeah. She says one thing to the media. She has a lot of money. She could just make things go away. What they say behind closed doors, I'm sure, is abhorrent. Even on the show. She I don't just watch shits the show. On them. Really? I mean, I just see clips online. At a certain point, yeah. Even the show, you can't hide it too too well if no. you're doing the show like that. And then they just justify it like they know that controversial is good for them a little bit, a nice little healthy dose of controversy. And also, like the more, the more it's like you can't say anything, you can't say this, you can't say this. It helps them because it makes more things controversial yeah. and less. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. The less you can say, she doesn't have to say anything that crazy, and then she could just parade it around as she's being so controversial. Yeah, I don't think that she says controversial. I think that her actions are more controversial. Probably so. I think that actually it's... That's I would, a, that was controversial when it came out. 
And I think that she really got a lot of backlash because of it. Yeah. I think that most of the time, I think she lives that life and she accidentally let that slip. I think she says that in her life. I don't. I doubt she's working that much. She works a lot. Yeah, she's just showing up to things a lot. I yes, which is working. Yes. What, what do men, what do boss? No, men, no, you're right. Boss men. No, they no, do, no. They don't do no, shit. She has an. She has the life of a boss man. She has a, the life a of a boss man, which is what you show up for a meeting. People tell you hours of work that they do. They present it to you, and you say no. Yes. And then you say, I, I, "I'll go for a low carb croissant." You go. I gotta go. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's what. That's. That is work. Yes. In her no, mind. no, that's her work, yes. So you can't take that away from no, her. No, 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 no. I think that she works nonstop in the way that she works. Yes. So I do think that she is doing that. I think that she, uh, like, shows toxic traits, too. For sure. Yeah, but I love that. I have no problem with her being man of the year. No, I have no problem with her being man of the year, either. It's because also, GQ is dying. Print is dying. Yes. And what do they say? They go, oh, we're gentlemen's quarterly. How do we open up our... I didn't even know that what it was. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's why they do Man of the Year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gentlemen's Quarterly. You don't have to tell me. They've begged me to, to subscribe, and I said I cannot. Yeah. I cannot. Um, also, I can't afford the looks and the swings that I think they take on these magazines. I, ca I can't wear. I can't afford to go out in this sure. like big swing of an outfit. Well, what I was saying was like, that they're like opening their market up to, they're like, how do we get gentlemen's quarterly open up to another 50% of the population? Oh, that's a smart move. We yes. just put a woman on the front. They, it seemed like they had an event that every celebrity was at, which I never really seen before. Like, because I never, I don't remember this GQ Man Kim of the Year going. event, yeah, being that big of a deal. Well, now Olivia it is. Rodrigo was there. This was a truly incredible marketing. Yeah, they did a good job. They did a great job. And that's why. I think for sports play, for Sports Illustrated Athlete of the Year, we should just give it to Taylor Swift. Just athlete real, of the Year? Athlete, don't they do that? Uh, Sure. Give her the Heisman. Give her the Heisman. Give Sebastian the Heisman. Canelli has said on this podcast, Taylor Swift deserves the Heisman Trophy, which is the award for the most outstanding college football player in Heisman. America. Give we the should Heisman. give Taylor Swift the Heisman. Fuck it. Why not? I mean, we're all just doing media <laughs> stunts. I'm down. Give her the Heisman. Right? <laughs> Why not? I thought you were wearing a turtleneck for a second. I would love you in a turtleneck. I'll get a turtleneck. I think you would look amazing in a turtleneck. Maybe I get one. You would look so good. A quarter, a quarter turtleneck. You know what it is? I used to have to wear them. My mom made me wear them too late in life where I was like, I look so corny. No one in this fucking school, this entire elementary school, has ever wear a turtleneck to school. And I would have like four. No, and I, it scarred me. Well, because you're a chilly boy. Yeah. You need a turtleneck. I should get a turtleneck. You, I would say I love a turtleneck. I have a turtleneck in my closet. That's a, this is a good idea. I might wear a turtleneck to Christmas. A quarter. Quarter. It's just something light. Yeah. Just something light. It's nothing too heavy. You know? I'll get one. Same material. Just just go up the neck a little bit. Yeah, I'm down. I think I'm going to get one. That's a good and recommendation. Let, comment. let him comment. Let him comment. What, does he have a hickey? Yeah, does he have a hickey? Here's no, I don't one. have hickeys. I've had maybe three in my life. Oh. I tell people stop, stop it. Nice, but it, I it, I wish that they in your life. redefined men. You want a four? No, I would take a fourth. You'll one take day. a fourth? Yeah, one day. Oh, I would love. Uh, on your honeymoon, you should be allowed to walk openly with hickeys on your on your neck. Oh yeah, on honeymoon should be hickey season for sure. If that's you what you're look, into, and you look back and you go, look, we had to have so many hickeys. <laughs> Are you look into that? A, we're in Punta Canta with so many hickeys. Punta Canta. <laughs> Enunciating T's that don't exist. <laughs> Punta Cantinato? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I, don't know. I don't even know where that is. Mexico? Uh, yeah. Yes. No. Where? DR. DR. Oh, Punta Cana. Yeah, yeah. Um, Punta Canta. No, I would have liked D GQ to redefine masculinity instead of just finding the woman who does a, their best toxic man impression. But yeah, that's great. I guess it's something. It's opening doors. That This will somehow piss people off. That's While great. still not changing the narrative at all. That's a great point, Robbie. That's a great point. Yeah, I think that... Um, it would have been nice if they said, can men get fucking cozy uh, yeah. on the cover They'll of GQ? And it's you. You are the man, <laughs> man of the year. Men want to be softer a little bit. They'll never do that. You know, all I'm asking for for Christmas is blankets and, and, and pillows. 
Yeah, I know. I brought up Sebastian. We're on vacation together. He has two luggage that are not really mobile, and he's like, "I gotta get new luggage. I gotta get new luggage. Whatever." Yeah, that was. We're a me at and you his. Combo. We're at his parents' that was house. A me and you. I can't trust the kid with we're information. We're at his parents' house, and his mom's like, "What do you want for Christmas? You need new luggage, or no?" She's like, "What do you want? Don't you need new luggage?" And Sebastian's like, "No, no, no, no. I don't need new luggage. I need sheets." And I said, "No, his luggage is broken." Because you were trying to lie to your mother and say it wasn't broken. I'm like, because no, I he want couldn't. Pillows walk for it Christmas. Off. Yeah, because he wants pillows and sheets. I want pillows and sheets. He's like, and now I can't get my pillows and sheets, and you, Robbie. You know what I'm going to end up getting for Christmas? <laughs> luggage. Luggage. You screwed my fucking Christmas. Mickey Mouse luggage. You screwed my Christmas. <sighs> I forgot about my Christmas ruins. I think it'll be nice. <laughs> you love Christmas. Oh, my God. I think it'll be nice. You're, so You're such funny. a Christmas family. You guys love Christmas. It's a big. You, you know guys uh, radiate Christmas cheer. You know what's nice about Christmas? I don't have to pretend to. I I think a lot of the time I sometimes pretend to be cool, and I don't pretend to be cool around Christmas. I just show my pure joy and happiness. That's good, and it's so great because I think that there is this problem that's running through our country. Okay. Cool guy syndrome. Someone I agree. Someone acting too cool for something that they're at. Yes. The best thing you could do for some, a place that you are is lean into the energy of the place. That's the coolest thing you could do instead of, like, acting above it. Because otherwise, you're a fool. You showed up to somewhere you don't want to be. What are we doing, bro? How Nobody am, forced you to be here. Am I really going to walk up to a cookie that looks like a Christmas tree that my mother spent 10 hours baking a batch of and not go, ooh, ah, <laughs> you can <give> miss <me> up. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's nice. I to fully. Happy holidays. <laughs> Am I really not going to scoop some hot cocoa and sing happy holidays? No, you should. And But you know what you see a lot at Christmas? Hats down. Yeah, I'll take another cookie. Yeah, good. <laughs> what are we doing? You just had pure – someone's energy and joy just went in your mouth. Yes. Hello. <laughs> to be cool is to be so comfortable with yourself that you're just allowing your emotions to overflow. I think so too. And, I and think, that's the coolest thing anybody can be is themselves. And I think that – thank you. Right? And that's you being yourself. Do, do, do. You're watching the Disney Channel. <laughs> I think it go. is. There you go. I think it is. I know. You know what? I had this point. I was so excited to bring it up. And then you said it like that. And now I go, maybe I want to be the cool he guy. He wants to be the cool guy. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm kidding. Um, but I, there is this like idea. People are going to go home and they're going to ab- act like they're above their house. Yes. That they're above their setting. That they're above the holidays. Right? Yes. And I understand depression's real. Depression is real, and sometimes you go back to a situation that isn't great. That's not what we're talking about. And the family situation. No, we're talking about the holiday, buying in to positivity and happiness Yes. around the holidays. You don't need to go home and flex on your family that you were able to get a a bonus, and now you're looking at Rolexes. Yes. No one needs to bring up a Rolex at Christmas unless that's the vibe of your family. No, yeah. You do not need to go home and say that. <laughs> you know what you need to go home and say? Oh, God, I haven't heard Bing Crosby in years. Oh, God. Yeah, what's do you, the traditions you? that you used to do. To come back and be like, I'm now above the traditions we used to do as a family. And I'm not somebody who's a big tradition person, but in generally speaking. But just things that you and your family like to do together around the holidays is cute. And it's good. Sometimes I slip into cool guy. You do. And I don't want to. I mean, it's f- part of my upbringing. It is part of your upbringing. I mean, I, what can I say? I was like, I was like, just so damn freaking cool. You were cool. <laughs> and I'm so uncool. Being around me, you slip into cool guy. And that's what it is. It sometimes <laughs> is that. It sometimes is like, I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to be so corny. But corny isn't bad. No, I, I want to say, as a quick aside, I watched the show one piece and you brought up on the podcast that you watched it and you said it reminded me you of me a little bit did i say that yeah you did which made me feel so seen talk about when you get somebody a present 
and they're like, oh, they do pay attention. I'm watching this One Piece show, and I'm like, wow, the fact that Sebastian saw this and was like, oh, I should buy in a little. I forget the words you said. I'll t- I'll t- but it affected. You were like, oh, I, I, it made me feel like I should listen to some of the things you say a little bit, I think maybe you said. I'll tell you this. Why I think it, I, that you do a quality that that guy does, which I I, I like. loved him. Oh, my God. I know you, you know I loved him. And I, for me, I, it was a battle to fight his corniness. Really? A little bit. Uh, but I, I'm going – I'm having my hands in the air as he's talking sometimes. The show is great, right? I loved it. Um, But one thing that he does that I liked that I think you do is you put effort into friendship. Yes, and to put effort into friendship is is something that is the opposite of being a cool guy. It's the opposite of like I don't care. It's is like his aura is I care. Be with me. This is you know. It's cool to care. And he is a hundred percent spewing that out. And, I and think- you have to believe it. And he and- believes it in his soul. And it's like it's not cool. It's not cool if it's fake. But he believes it in his soul. And if you believe it in your soul, then I think it is cool because that's who he is. Yeah, I think that. Um- I mean, one, he's an actor, but he did. They did such a good <laughs> job casting this kid. The kid was so good. Yeah, he, I thought the kid was great. I thought so, too. I just thought um, I just love how everyone he meets. He just like says the crazy like he has this lofty, lofty dream and he tells him up front and he's like, so such believes in it. And he believes in the people around him. That is also important. That's why that's I, a bit, very important part. I of, think it's easy for him to believe in himself after he eats the devil fruit and is able. Well, that's when he has this crazy superpower. Yes, he has a superpower. So that yes. I think it becomes easier. But you have a superpower. But it's not. Thank you. You're welcome. Inst- you do. Instantly, I'm jumping in, uh, accepting it. <laughs> you should. You should accept it. But the difference is his is like um, people could see and it's undeniable. You have a superpower that's undeniable, too. That's one. I would say so many people describe you undeniable. But you know. Probably because my beard. (laughs) That's it. (laughs) I saw Sebastian Canelli perform last night. Undeniable. Undeniable. What? His beard? (laughs) It it, it got a little darker. I know. You haven't shaved it? No. Yeah, it's definitely darker. I've been thinking about shaving it, but I I can't pull the trigger on that yet. Yeah. I mean, maybe I'll do it at the... I, I think I might go home to Thanksgiving just to stir up the pot with the... I hate to break it to you. I don't think it's going to land the way you want, unfortunately. God. I went back with a mustache one time I went to my to- family's, just the mustache. But I have darker hair than you. I know, I know. So it hit a little bit different. Um, But I do think that people, they act too cool for the scenario that they're in. And then when they're in a cool scenario, they act... They don't step up to the plate like they're acting at like home or at a setting where they feel like alpha. They act they act like, oh, it's just nice I'm here. And then they'll go to an, a scenario where they feel like, oh, I'm the coolest person in the room and act like it. It's so much cooler to just act, act with what the reality that is around us. 100%. I think that a lot of people will like, like to smoke weed, right? This was me. And then I... When I would be like smoking with people, I would just be like, "Oh, this is so cool! I'm get to be here." And then I'd go with my family. I'd make it my like identity. Yeah. And like, what was I doing? Because you're not cool in either scenario. I'm not cool. What's cool is to be you, and then you're cool in both scenarios. A thousand percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a lesson learned. You know what For I mean? For sure. Um, I think that's to show up in cool scenarios and act cool and leave that behind and then be in another scenario and be like, I could be cool in this scenario as well is ideal to be able to provide who you are in all scenarios and show how you feel is the coolest thing that you could do. hundred percent. Cool guy syndrome is sunglasses and a hat. It's hiding from people. Now everyone does that because celebrities do that. Yes. This is something as celebrities go out on the streets, but here's the thing. Who are you hiding from? Your cousin? Yeah. Your neighbor? There's no paparazzi looking for you. You're waiting for the casserole to be finished in the kitchen. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't need sunglasses and you giving one word answers. No. Your life is not their life. Also, newsflash, a lot of celebrities, not that cool. Thank you. Not cool. You haven't hung out with them. You don't know if they're cool. You don't know if they're pleasant to be around. They're, it's a totally, they live a totally different life. They are a immediate vessel. Especially if they're just actors. Especially, yeah, actors. A hot actor. I couldn't think of a person I don't want to hang out with more. Yes. Than a hot actor. Oh. No life experience. 
I know. And they're all, sadly like can't have a hot take. Extremely insecure in a way because they they're yeah, maybe we bond on that. They need valid it's like you're well it's also I feel bad because it's like you're been told that your validation is external and like you get a lot That's of your it. validation from like That's your looks it. and like and it's like all right when's the next thing going to come? There, there's no like real I mean this obviously they make a lot of money, but it's still like, what's the next thing? What's this the next real. thing? You don't have a job that you go to every day and you uh, can feel secure in. Us on the podcast, we feel bad for hot actors. That's it. We this feel. This take. We've been waiting to we release. We genuinely feel bad. Yeah. Because it must. I lose sleep over it. It <laughs> actually must suck <laughs> no. to suck that much. No, no, but I, I don't must, feel bad. It must be horrible to have like that little of a personality and all your validation be from other people. I don't feel bad. I feel bad, but I look. I I, I don't sometimes... think they're cool. I don't think that they're this as cool as you think they are. I flip through People magazine to get an ego boost. You ah. do. At least, at least I'm not that. At least I'm not Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope Ryan Reynolds has a moment where he comes to peace with himself. Of course. And I'm all sure these people have to, because that's like... when you'll unlock cool. Yeah, I think actually Ryan Reynolds seems kind of cool. He seems like yeah. he has a nice family life. I think um, something that celebrities, when they do have a good family, I'm like, oh, they probably seem cooler now. Yeah, well, down to earth and grounded in things that aren't that life. Grounded is literally one of the most important things to seem cool. Yeah, but that's what I don't think people realize. They see a different version. And pe- people should be idolizing people in their lives that they see all the time rather than celebrities. Definitely. Because then the, you won't fall into cool guy syndrome. No. Acting like you're above it. You know why celebrities act above it? Because that's how they get graded on what, if they're A, A, A list or They're B-list. terrified of what people will say. Yes. They're like walking on eggshells constantly on thin ice and they don't know. They, they don't know how to form an opinion. I've hung out with, I've been around celebrities before and it's like, Sometimes they're like want to know what the normal people are thinking or they want the validation of like a normal. What's the, what's going on in normie life? All they can <laughs> do like, <laughs> is lose what they have. Yes. Oh, that's so why would they speak? Yeah, it's hard. I mean, well, I we, again don't need to sympathize with. No, it's celebrities, brutal. But it is. I think also uh, my the bigger point is that's not who we should be idolizing. No, 100 percent. Yeah. Then you fall into cool guy syndrome. Yeah. Too cool for school. You're not going to win that. You're not because they're not doing it based like what you said. They're not doing it to be cool. They're doing it to, to maintain a, exactly. Yes, they're protecting their bag. They're pro- yes. making sure that they could pay money, a mortgage, right? Yes. You do not need to show up with that energy now that you're on some uh, winter break from college. Yeah. You don't need to go back no. acting too cool for school just because you made a bunch of money and and you work in on Wall Street. You do not need to go go back to Oklahoma. And flex on everyone. No. It's no. A, it is awful look. I think to go home and brag about how many square feet your apartment is in New York City and then to walk in to like just a blue collar house that's huge. It's like what is this? Nobody gives a fuck. Nobody cares. Yes. For you to for you to be like, Hey, I have a fifteen hundred square foot one bedroom. You walk you go into their house, they go, Oh, cool, I got fourteen acres. Like yeah. you're flexing on things that like aren't relevant to them also. So in your attempt to look cool, to go home and look cool, you end up looking like a loser. A hundred percent. That's there's a tipping point for cool guy syndrome. Like a couple of people have pulled it off and it's never been when they've had a relationship with a person. It's always been from afar, right? Cool guy syndrome is good in people magazine on the internet with just an image of them from a paparazzi. It's not good sitting at a long weekends with them. No, even a long form conversation. That's why they don't do podcasts. Yes, that's why. That's why all the Jimmy Fallon's are five minutes long and it's pre planned. Most and, of them scripted. And when they don't know what to do, what do they do? They lip sync. They lip sync. A lot of them hire writers. They play. People it. can't be on Jimmy Fallon for five minutes without a writer I know. telling them what to say. Like this is what celebrities kind of have to do. It's it's truly I feel bad for these guys because they have to lean into cool guy syndrome. But young people and other people out there don't do that. Yeah, they're just terrified. Cool guy syndrome is for people who are scared. Yes. Don't be scared. I think when you're you have to acknowledge when you're living in a bubble and then when you leave that bubble, you need to acknowledge that you're leaving that bubble and you need to be able to relate and exist outside of that bubble. Which celebrities have a bad job of. That's why they hire writers. You know what's great? This is like a good I learned in college. Yes. 
when I was in a frat, you learn in college that nobody cares about the Greek life ecosystem of your college. So to go home and brag about the party that you threw at your frat house on a Wednesday night to everybody in your family because you were doing jello shots and slime in the basement of a four bedroom apart or house in Ewing, New Jersey, nobody gives a shit about. So for you to get all Sounds like boring. bragging about that, I just did it a little bit by giving You've details. Done it before too. <laughs> but that's what you need to acknowledge when you're leaving a bubble. Nobody cares about that bubble, and you need to be able to relate to people outside of the bubble you live in. You know what you need to do when you go back to that other bubble. You need to take interest in what other people do. Now, a hundred percent. Actually, the coolest thing that you could do is take interest in others. Listening is a huge part of yeah, seeming cool because people will. Cool, I just also think it means like pleasant. Like you want the, to leave the situation. Oh, they were great. Yeah. Yeah, cool. but I, I think that changes as you become an adult. Yeah. I think for a while, cool is mysterious. So then what do you do? You smoke, take a lot of cigarette breaks. You just smoke <laughs> cigarettes and you say nothing. You say one word at a time. But here's the thing. People that act cool like that, they have other value to add to the world. You can't just act cool and have no value to add yes, to the world. Yes. Like, here's the thing. If you're a great architect or engineer and you just act cool, I kind of get it. You yeah. Know, something that you're providing, right? At least actors have something they're providing. A lot of people go home and just act too cool and have nothing else going on. Yeah. I do think, in, like, I think Anthony Bourdain, one of the coolest people to ever, in our generation, one of the coolest people in media. That we saw. Would you not describe him as cool? Yeah. And he cared. He invested in people. Yeah, and I took it. Outside of I his bubble. It took, a, it was a journey for him to get there. Very much. And I think that he probably had cool guy syndrome. I mean, he was an addict. He At times, like, he probably had cool guy syndrome. I think that actually some of the be the most cool people are people that have overcome cool guy syndrome. I could see that. Because they're actively trying to stay away from that. Yeah, acknowledging what that is. Yeah. I agree with that. So I think like me having it in the past this might be the best thing I've ever done. I definitely, I don't think I was ever cool, but I was trying to be. I maybe yeah, had course. cool guy well, syndrome a little bit when I was in the frat. I would say that's probably the biggest time. Yeah. It's the frats get tough because you start speaking a whole different language, especially when I was Everyone in it. Everyone does though. Wall Street people. Wall people, Street do. Improv people do. You're right. Marketing people. Yeah. Like. People that are, are in the uh, indie rock scene in small town. Like, everyone yeah. does. Yeah. Sorry, I go on a rant about being cool. I guess it's something I think about a lot. I'm worried that I'm just out here preaching how soft I am. But I think that soft is the <laughs> coolest thing I could do. Yeah, I agree. Uh, speaking of cool, I, was, I had my eyes opened this weekend on how uncool millennials are. The worst generation. I didn't realize how uncool we are. I heard somebody basically use millennial as a slur. Yeah, everyone hates us. I didn't know. There's nothing good about They're us. They're so millennial, and it was like with a, a tone of disgust. And I'm like, wait a second, I'm a millennial. What? What's so bad? I didn't realize we had such a bad rep. We do. We used to be cool. Pre-COVID, we were the 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 young generation of New York City. I know. And now it's like the most detestable thing you could be is a millennial. We didn't even live. Because we were like, oh, we're free, but we were never free. No, we, we were never free. Gen Z. You had a little bit more free. time of millennials being cool, I guess, in New York. Not really. The comedy. Yeah. <laughs> what are we talking here? Yeah. I spent years going back and forth on the bus from Staten Island to yeah, yeah, the city yeah. to do ten minutes. But oh. I didn't realize how uncool we are. Yeah. People don't like us. We have nothing. So at least boomers have. Um, Money. They have money. They're horrible people, but like, right? They're not. They're, they're struggle. They're ruining the world, but they have money. Yeah, they have security. We struggle to be good people and have no money. Yes. Gen Z at least is on the right side of, of almost all issues, right? Well, I, I guess I didn't realize how much of what we had was just the youth and influence. Well, at least Gen Z is like looking at like like how stupid uh like. Infrastructure uh, is the society, yeah. like how stupid society is, and like no, we're not going to put up with that. I know we did the we, app generation. We were like thought we were helping society. We did nothing, and it was bad. Like we were the gig. We transferred it to a little bit of a gig economy. Yeah, we made things worse. We kind of made things not much better. Yeah, no, but that's not our fault. No, I think that people just think, oh, we're the lose, like the sad sacks, like yeah. the people that yeah, that stinks. Millennials, no money, no job. Oof, not even good style. Not good style. We got nothing. I, I guess we're corny. I guess we had Michael Space Jam. 
I don't know. I mean, I think there are cool millennials. There are people that are millennials that are very popular. Even the YouTuber, like, but there are the YouTubers. There's artists. Lady Gaga's a millennial. Like, that's individual. Yeah. That's not individuals are different than the collective. Rihanna, Beyonce, all these people, millennials, millennials. individuals. I know. Like but us a, as a unit, every generation is going to have great individuals. Taylor Swift. And, and, and that's an, uh, no, I know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Go we ahead. got good uh, do, how many millennials. Do we got some good. We are some cool millennials, but we of course we are not because now they're they now have moved on to Gen Z. They're like aligned themselves with Gen Z, but not every millennial is, is able to do that. Oh yeah, a lot of millennials got to go to work. Yeah, I know. And we're just the average millennial is so uncool. There you go. It's it was an eye opening experience. This is experience. part of getting older. Yeah, I was just like I never heard millennial used as like a slur. So millennial. There's um, or an adjective. There's this uh, idea that uh, s- uh, history is cyclical in uh, eighty year cycles. Okay. And it like defines generations of who they are and stuff like that, right? Um, and so we're at the end of like basically a disaster generation right now. We're we're a disaster generation. No, not generate. Like we're at the end of a disaster era. Like where okay. the world is falling apart and things should get better. They say according to this like thing that's happened throughout society every eighty years. Okay, hopefully things get better. And I don't they have say, much faith, but I hope they say that uh, we are equivalent to the greatest generation. So when people look back, they will look at millennials as people that open doors for people though. I hope so. That's what they said. They said that um, we are like 80 because if you think 80 years ago, like that was like our grandparents. Okay. Right. So grandparents are almost 80 years older than you. Yeah. Um, My grandparents, early 90s, 70s, late 70s, 80s, 80s, early 90s. Like, yeah. I'm, I and, guess 50 years older than me. And they struggled, but they fought through hard times for people. Yeah. I guess my great grandparents, it would be 80 years older. Yeah, and the, your great grandparents were the World War Two generation. Yeah, yeah, that's. I what liked I'm my great grandparents. Great, loved. I was able to have three of them a lot until I was in high school. Nice. Well, I had a nice relationship with my no, great grandparents, which I is know. rare. That's rare. I know. I'm just. I'm making a point about societal. No, you're right. All right, continue your point. I you're... just thought of my great grandparents. I haven't thought of them in a while, and it, it came to me, and I got the filled rare moments of like trying to be serious about like history. I've learned. You go. I don't like my great grandparents. Love. I had three. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, go. Sorry. Sorry. No, you want to talk about the great grandparents? No, I'm, o- I, I'm no. open to it. No, no, no. Continue. And so there that was a generation that it went through horrible like that World War II was like the end of like a disaster era. Right? And so that's what we're dealing with now. I think it should be done in like three, four years. But they're like saying that like they felt that way that that generation was shit on tip and then as and the we time. look back it was yeah. like that was the people that got us through those hard times because when you think about it millennials are the people that got us through covid yeah millennials well are that's the when people our, who, our era ended in covid the millennial reign ended in covid well yeah but we're the ones who got us everyone will like look back and be like oh the millennials were the ones who yes. kind of like helped us get back on our feet so we could really live. A lot of the nurses, a lot of the teachers, a lot of the, is our generation. And like they dealt, so like people that fought in World War II were kids for like World War One. We were kids for like 9-11, stuff like that. Yes. And now we're dealing with so much in the Middle East now too, right? And yeah. hopefully they're saying like there should be a push through for that too. Like, yeah. Um. So it is this idea of like, like people will shit on us, but they will look back at millennials as they were the people that dealt with all the shit so we could have a better life. I hope so. I hope so too. But I, right now we're a joke. I didn't Well, I, I was like, I used to be so proud to be a millennial. Yeah. I would be t- right on, on my show. I'd be like, millennials are dope. Millennials are dope. I love millennials. I would be dope like sticking up for cool. millennials. Dope isn't cool either. No. To say something's dope. Not at all. People make fun of that too. Yep. But it is, I had just never heard it been used as a as like a, such a negative s- thing and i was like wait is that that's a bad thing you that- can't say slay i can't say slay i mean we're that's too what, old like you I know? know people call things a slay yeah that's a slay that's a slay it wasn't it a slay yeah people say that we can't but say we've that. said no the millennials started the slay movement well gay queer millennials i would say sure black queer millennials i would say started the slay definitely popularized this but I'm just saying we can't say dope, we can't say slay. Like we can't we'll get made fun of to say 
what was popular for us to say when we were younger to oh, be excited. Oh, yes. And we'll get made fun of to say what's popular with the younger generation to get. So what do we, we – yeah. There's no right we choice. We have to be quiet. It's a lose-lose situation. Yes. That's why you just be yourself. That's why – That's what, yeah. That's why millennials are Disney adults because they don't know where else to go. So they just go, I'll go to a place where no one's <laughs> yeah. allowed to make fun of me. Yeah, that – I still, well, I was hanging out with a, a, a all Gen Z, which were five years apart. And that is something we bonded on Disney Channel. Nice. That's what we came back to. There you go. But it's a nice middle ground. Yeah. I guess there's some good millennial art. Yeah. There's a lot I of good millennial. I think there's art. Millenni- good millennial art. Don't I think that them, Don't let them confuse no, you. No, no, I love all love to everybody. I don't know you, you don't have an existential crisis over yeah, this. Yeah, I'm proud to be a millennial. Don't have an existential crisis. Why I brought up the history thing was so that you know that people are going to look and say ah, how cool. We are the generation that brought the internet in, you know? Yeah. We 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 we're were, the we pioneered a lot of things. Yeah, we dipped our toes. People, we we're the first well, let's ones see about to deal MySpace. with this. Maybe deal we'll see this. about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, people are gonna look back and and say that was amazing. Okay, that's what I think. So let them make fun of you now because no matter what, you can't do anything right as a millennial right now. Yeah, which I just it was a new experience. For I don't me. even bring up generations. No, I know. It's I popular. Know. It's a popular thing to talk about. You know who it's popular for? What Gen Z? Yeah. But I wasn't thinking about Gen X. I didn't even know what Gen X, what their name was. I'm also the younger millennial. Not that younger. Yeah, 93. Millennial ends 96. It starts 1980. Oh, uh, okay, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like... Yeah, there's a difference. There's I like was 90s. like, oh, we're all... Like, Gen X, I wasn't... Like, we, I wasn't that close with the generation above. Like, Neither was I. You know what I mean? We were... It was just all millennials together. Yeah. And, like, millennials had gotten shit on when I was in college. Like, it was... Millennials got to the workforce... Way before I did. So they had already, it's like the narrative had been just like negative towards millennials, negative towards millennials, negative towards millennials. And I was like, it's cool. We're the underdog to like, we got to fight for millennials. Like, oh, we're we here. We're there. The now we're not. Yeah, but now it's not. Nobody's like rooting for us. Yeah, because you got to. Eventually... Not even the underdog. We're not even cool. Like, we're not. You, you eventually just have to move on. Yeah, that's what it is. And that's what now Gen Z is like, oh, Gen Z gets shit on in the new. You know what I mean? Like, they yeah. can have a counterculture. You can't. There's no more counterculture for millennials. I feel like that's facts because yeah. most of them are in their 30s and 40s. <laughs> yeah, I guess they're done. They don't care. They're done. They, they, they can't. It's just such a struggle that they're like, I gotta just figure my shit out. Yeah. A lot of us are in therapy. Um. Yeah. But, but I, it was it was an uh, eye opening situation for me. There you go. Well, I hope it doesn't change you. No. All love to everybody who said this. Uh. All love. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Cover your ass. Of course. Um all no, right. it's all love. Always all love. Um uh I the strike is over for SAG, unless you want to vote no. Um all that SAG stuff is kind of sad. I think that actors are gonna be obsolete in the future. Um That it, is sad though. In my opinion. Um and I even like looking at like what little kids enjoy. They just enjoy videos on YouTube created by AI. It's actually kind of ridiculous. Um, that makes me sad. Well, that's the truth. It's like this toilet bowl person that everyone loves. It's just AI created this like all, all this toilet bowl, like these jokes, you know? Yeah. Um. So, but whatever. Uh, I am now allowed to talk about some stuff that I did, uh, which is cool. So, uh, I'm gonna tell. I'll talk about. Oh Mike's. yeah, some acting stories. Sebastian was in the crowded room, a TV show with Tom Holland. He has a funny scene. I uh, mean, it's not a funny it's not show funny at all. Scene at it all. is funny. He calls Tom. He goes what, something with the freak show, Freak Boy. Yeah, I call him a freak boy. He calls Tom Holland. I don't a freak want to talk boy. about this all on right, the regular to... podcast stuff. Uh, um, all right, we're not going to talk about it on the. I'll talk about show, it on the Patreon. But um, you acted a little bit. You have been in some stuff. I've been in a couple things, uh, which I'll, is cool. I just want to be able to speak bluntly about it, so I don't yeah, want to yeah, have yeah. to bite my tongue. Um, cool. Yeah, so- I want to tell some personal. I have some stories I want to tell on the Patreon too. Also, if you join the Patreon, you could ask us any question, and we'll answer. That's where we're at right now with the episodes on the Patreon. So, if you want us to answer something very specifically, uh, w- join the Patreon. Ten dollars a month. We've been answering questions, and yeah, I have a funny story that I want to tell you about last night. Cool. Um, but yeah, we're gonna end this and then just jump into the Patreon if. You like the show? Please subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe on Spotify. Uh, if we come up on your Spotify Wrapped, please repost us. Uh, we would love to see that. We'll repost people that repost us. Um, 
and on leave a review leave an apple review anything that you can give us some kind of review or comment or subscription please do that on all the platforms it does make a difference and it does help we need to start pushing that more beautiful yeah if we're on your uh spotify rap list share it so i feel good yeah it will make us feel nice it'll make us feel nice. It'll, every comment that is encouraging and that people leave on things it is positive it oh. is a part of why we still do this so. i love that um Thank all right you. robbie hit the music <laughs>